Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Tuesday, the 11th of January today. Now, I'm going to start off with the United States and then we'll look at Europe. And uh, the World Health Organization seems to have finally realised that half of the population of Europe is going to uh, contract Omicron variant of SARS coronavirus two in the next six to eight weeks. I think it's probably going to be quicker than that, but we'll look at that in a minute. Let's start off with the United States, though. Uh, some fairly, well, it, we're living through a quite momentous time at the moment. South, South Africa, the cases are definitely declining. Um, the UK looks like they've more or less stabled and probably starting to decline a bit. The United States, they're still very much on the way up. So we have South Africa leading the way, followed by the UK, followed by uh, the United States, and, and roughly in time with the United States, more of Eastern Europe as well. So starting off with the United States here, this is a Reuters report, 1.35 million new coronavirus infections. Now, uh, Reuters here have confused infections with cases. They actually mean cases because of case cases are those which are diagnosed. Infections are those which occur. And of course, we don't pick up all of the infections that occur. We only pick up the cases. So I think we can assume the number of infections in the United States is double that, perhaps two million, perhaps perhaps up to three million new infections per day in the United States. This is a really massive period of growth. If they can estimate there's 1.35 million diagnoses of cases, then the numbers are very high. Now, just to use this same uh, sort of estimate, um, previous record was uh, 1.03 million on the 3rd of January. Now, to be fair, this is uh, Monday figures are a lot of places, of course, don't report over the weekend. So uh, Monday figures can be artificially higher in terms of cases, although, as we've said, an underestimate in terms of actual infections. Um, so the average for the past week has been about 700,000 diagnosed cases per day, uh, despite people not getting tested, despite the asymptomatic cases, despite the severe logistical difficulties that there have been with testing in the United States. Now, this only matters, of course, in terms of hospitalizations. The cases don't matter too much if people aren't sick. Although having said that, and I've, I've, I've had probably hundreds of messages now, a lot of you um, have had the common cold chorizal symptoms, the headache, the runny nose, the sneezing, the sore throat. But an awful lot of you, and I haven't got a figure on this, but it's a large amount of you have reported you've actually been quite ill for quite a few days. But after being ill for a few days and feeling really pretty bad for a few days, uh, you do seem to bounce back quickly, is, is the message we seem to be getting. And this is consistent with the idea of Omicron infecting the upper airways rather than infecting the lung tissue itself. But still, nothing to be trifled with. It's, it's, a, real, it's a real thing. But of course, for those few days feeling rough uh, or ill, frankly ill, you get a lot of immunity. So, you know, if you can kind of reassure yourself with that, if you are going through a period of suffering at the moment. Hospitalizations uh, hit an all-time high, doubled in the past three weeks, according to Reuters reports. 136,604 people hospitalized with COVID-19 on Monday, yesterday. Again, it's not really appropriate to talk about records. It's the highest amount, really, but um, <clears throat> 132,000 on January 2021. 20, so we see hospitalizations in winter 2022 are higher than hospitalizations in 20. 21 and that's 20 uh, 2022 20, so hospitalizations are an all-time peak now and of course a lot of staff are out sick so it's, it's strange in in the united states you you say out sick so i believe in the in the uk we always say off sick you always go off sick not out sick <coughs> but it's, it's it's the same it's it's, it's, the, it's the same it's the same difference i suppose um not all of those necessarily feeling that ill hopefully but but of course um, isolating but because of covid tests um so hospitals really struggling with a lot of people uh reporting in sick many elective procedures of course have had to be cancelled and this this is this is a real problem because people that are waiting for procedures they're often suffering you have all the anxiety that goes with waiting for your procedure could could be it could be a surgical procedure it's, it's very nerve-wracking and um then to be told you're not getting it really is quite a, it really it really is a heck of a blow. I've had to deliver this a few times to people myself, and it's not a nice thing to do, and it's not a nice thing for the patients to experience. Um, let's just look at a few graphics from the states. Um, so this is the takeover of uh, Omicron in purple from 
delta in uh, light brown, whatever it is. Um, so we see it is taking over. Now, um, this is just percentages. I haven't included the numerical scale, but we do know that the number of the actual number of Delta cases are going down dramatically as the number of Omicron cases go up. So Omicron is actually uh, replacing Delta, despite this is only showing uh, percentages, but we do know that to be the case. Uh, so pretty high percentages now. We're looking at, what, 95% Omicron, something in that uh, order. So Omicron has displaced Delta almost completely in the States. And of course, that, that data is only up to the 1st of uh, January. So that, that data is actually 11 days out of date now. Although I've taken it from the CD website uh, about an hour before we came on to do this video. So frustratingly uh, sluggish, actually, the CDC data, keeping it up to date. Um, again, we see the proportions in different parts of the country. OK, it's a little slower here. Is that Midwest? Um, so a um, little more Delta, a little less Omicron, but we can see it's taking over. So California, Florida, Texas, New England, it's it, it, up there in Washington. It, it, it's, it's taken over. It's, um, it is now an Omicron uh, pandemic, which, of course, is uh, remarkably good news because it is causing less illness because it's not infecting the lung tissues. Now, just a few examples have been keeping an eye on from the States, just for illustrative purposes. This one's California. Uh, so from December the 20th to the 6th of December, unvaccinated people were three times, 3.9 times more likely to get COVID-19 than fully vaccinated people. So um, we can see that the California authorities here are claiming a degree of protection, which, which is true. Um, the degree of protection in the UK is nothing like as much as this, actually. So, um, But anyway, that's the data there. We can see that the... Uh, the unvaccinated are getting lots of cases, but of course we can also see that the vaccinated are getting lots of cases as well. The difference in the UK between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated in terms of symptomatic infection is not as much as California. Lots of vaccinated people are getting symptomatic infection in the UK, but less, of course, being hospitalised. Uh, just to illustrate that here with this, this is from um, Florida. Um, so here we see the the vaccinations in purple and, and here we see the weekly case count. So even though in Florida, we notice that the vaccinations are high, um, we also see that the cases have shot up here despite uh, the high vaccination rate. So we are getting lots and lots of breakthrough infections from vaccines. The main reason to get vaccinated is to be protected from hospitalisation, severe illness, intensive care and death. It's not protecting anything like as much from symptomatic infection. And again, uh, hundreds of you have written in to tell me that you've been doubly vaccinated or triply vaccinated and, and still feeling pretty groggy for, for a few days. But thankfully, the vast majority are bouncing back fairly quickly. Um, what's this one here? Uh, oh, this is new. I think this one's New York. So again, this shows the, the the this one's got numbers on it as well. So it, it does shows that shows that Omicron in currently in New York is ninety five point seven percent of uh, diagnosed uh, cases. Delta therefore is only four percent basically, so four point three percent. So we do see that takeover of Omicron, which as we've said is is pretty good, pretty good news. That's all we've got in terms of graphics from the States. Just interesting to follow a few sort of places to, to see what's going on. Now, schools in the States, um, again, staffing problems, bus drivers, teachers, Chicago, classes are cancelled. I think there's some political dispute going on there. Uh, New York, subway lines are out, which, of course, is a pretty big deal in New York. Um, just not enough staff. Um, de de deaths uh, 1700 per day in the United States so up a bit this is, this is not for New York of course this is for the whole US it was about 1400 a couple of weeks ago but um, it's nothing like as high as we would have feared although it's still a lot of individuals of course a heck of a lot and Pfizer um, plan to have an Omicron specific vaccine by March and let's just say I would be remarkably disappointed if we still need a, an Omicron specific vaccine in March. I'm expecting people to have been naturally exposed. Now, just before we go on to look at Europe, I think we'll just have a quick brief look here at uh, South Africa, which we have here. Um, now, these are the hospitalizations in South Africa. 
and they're, they're, they're going down, no question about it, they're going down quite nicely. Um, actual, just under 9,000 people in all of South Africa. Remember, we're talking about a population of 60 million people. And currently, those hospitalised who've been diagnosed with SARS coronavirus 2 and are hospitalised and require oxygen in all of the country is uh, just over 1,200, 1,246. So clear evidence there that in South Africa, people are not getting as sick, although as we've seen, the hospitalisations are going up in the United States. Now, moving on to Europe. Um, this is from the uh, regional office of the European Health Organization. Well, I was in two minds whether to report this or not, but I suppose, I suppose it's always good to have official uh, confirmation. So as of the 11th of January, actually, I think they might have published this on the 10th. I don't want to be unfair to the World Health Organization. Let's say as of Monday, the 10th of January, the World Health Organization realized that Omicron is going to sweep through Europe. Um, next, next six to eight weeks, more than half of people in Europe could be infected. Wow. Uh, headline news from the World Health Organization. I mean, it, re it really is incredible, isn't it? This is the World Health Organization that's supposed to be leading us. And it was obvious from the data that we reported on this channel. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's beginning of December. It, it's it's um, five, five, more, more than five weeks ago now. This was obviously going to happen as soon as we learned about the transmissibility, transmissibility characteristics of Omicron. We said this was going to happen. We said Omicron would sweep the world in short order, and of course it is. But anyway, the World Health Organization have um, made that official now, which I suppose that's we have to be grateful. Some might say better late than never. I, just, I, know, I know I'm being cynical here, but, uh, but dear, dear me, I mean, you know, talk about leading. Five weeks behind the times, it really is quite... Yeah, there we go. Move on. Hans Klung, director for Europe. Uh, a new west to east tidal wave is sweeping across the region. Now, this is true. It's going from west, the UK, uh, Netherlands, Belgium, moving eastwards to uh, eastern European countries, Hungary, Poland, places like that, eastern Germany. And that is the way it does seem to be going. Uh, the region saw over 7 million cases of COVID-19 in the first week of 2022. And of course, that's just diagnosed cases. We can say that the number of infections were, well, I think we're safe in saying at least 15, 15 to 20 million, to be quite honest. We, we, we could at least double that. We can at least, we can at least say um, 14, million, uh, 14 million infections. Quite, I'm fairly sure we can say that. Um, so infections, no, not infections, rather, cases... Uh, more than doubling over a two-week period, again, as we said, <laughs> but the World Health Organization. So that's in direct quotes from uh, Hans Klung himself. So he's, this is as of the 10th of January. 26 countries, more than 1% uh, being infected per week. Um, well, it's much higher than that in the UK. So again, this is under estimates here, I would say. Uh, 26 countries, more than 1% being infected per week. Boosters play an essential role in protecting the most vulnerable people from severe disease. Now, remember, the, this guy's from the World Health Organization. Now, after all the World Health Organization have been saying about people in Western countries should not get boosters, they now have done a complete 180, it would appear to me, and they're saying, oh, well, actually, maybe you should get boosters because it's going to make you less likely to get sick and hospitalized and die. So... Again, quite lamentable uh, changes of position, quite lamentable leadership here, really, from the World Health Organization, in my view. But, you know, I'm only an outside advisor. If someone from the WHO wants to come on, they're more than welcome to come on and talk about this. And they can explain it in much greater detail than I know. I'm only speaking as an outside advisor. Um, but it does seem like it appears to me like a 180 degree change of tack from the World Health Organization. Uh, so vulnerable people and health workers and teachers they're advising. Now, make a valid point here. Lower vaccination rates, Balkans, former Yugoslavian countries, Bosnia, places like that, um, Macedonia. Um, but Balkans and Eastern European countries, low vaccination rates. Make no mistake, this is going to rip through the former Yugoslavia, the Balkan area. It is going to rip through all of Eastern Europe and if the vaccination rates are low, hospitalisation rates will be higher. This is happening. It's going to happen. And um, it's, it is a concern for, for Eastern Europe. Um, for countries not yet hit with the Omicron surge, there's a closing window to act now and plan for contingencies. Um, so maybe we could slow it down a little bit. 
but we're not going to stop it. We can't stop it. We could get more people vaccinated and boosted. And we also need to optimise our immune system. And this vitamin D here is not here for decoration. I actually take vitamin D and sometimes some K2 as well. Vitamin D deficiency is causing immunosuppression across Europe, according to the data I have analysed. That is my firm conclusion. Uh, French Prime Minister, um, if we're to shut down classes as soon as there's the first case, bearing in mind the ox explosion of Omicron, so politicians using words like explosion of Omicron, um, all French schools would be closed in a matter of days. Now, he said this in response to changing from uh, PCR testing to uh, lateral flow testing. Um, but it, it basically it means that politicians are realising they have to pragmatically accommodate this virus. It is becoming endemic. I think that's kind of that would be my reading between the lines there. Um, Catherine Smallwood, WHO senior emergencies officer. Some sense of predictability needed to move from the pandemic to the endemic phase. So because there's not a lot of predictability, Catherine Smallwood of the World Health Organization here is saying we are still in we have to consider ourselves in the pandemic phase now uh, that that that's correct but i think there is a little more predictability than the world health organization are letting on here omicron is going to run through europe quicker i believe quicker than they said and everyone's going to be infected with it basically everywhere or at least exposed to it if not infected with it um but the World Health Organization here saying quite clearly we're still in the pandemic phase, not in the endemic phase. Um, so we are still a ways off. We still have a huge amount of uncertainty. Again, direct uh, quotes. Now, I just want to finish with some data from the United Kingdom. Just illustrates a few things here. Cases by date reported. Now, this is of today. Of course, the, this is not yet updated for Tuesday the 11th. But um, are we seeing a reduction in cases in the UK? Well, I think we probably are. Now, assuming, and it is, it is a big assumption, assuming that cases accurately represent and are proportional to infections, uh, this is, this is in interesting. Um, it means a lot of people have already been exposed in the United Kingdom. All these people that have been exposed already, all of these people here who represent these bars will have now good levels of immunity to Omicron in the vast majority of cases. Is it, is it starting to go down a bit? Probably. Probably. Is this good news? Yes, because it means there's more community immunity in the United Kingdom. Because these are cases, these are not being stopped by vaccination. They are partly being stopped by vaccination. But I believe the main reason these are being stopped is because of natural exposure now to one of the variants of sars coronavirus 2 And millions of us have been exposed to sars coronavirus 2 in the past week or two of the Omicron strain. So I think that is encouraging. A few more days yet to, to, to know, but that's probably fairly encouraging. Uh, patients in hospital. Now, this is still going up. Um, it's still going up. Um, it's not at an outrageous level. It's nothing like a size it was. We're not making records, unfortunately, as the United States is. But it's compounded by the fact that so many people are off sick and isolating. <clears throat> so there are problems because of because of the logistics of, of, of isolation. And of course, we get busier in winter anyway, um, but hospitalizations are increasing. Now, if it is true that the infections are going down here, then it won't be long, be about another 10 days, and that will be reflected in hospitalization starting to drop off. So from the data we have at the moment, we can say it's likely that hospitalizations in the UK will level off over the next 10 days and start to go down in the next couple of weeks. That is likely if that is a genuine reduction in cases. And, and people are intimating quite strongly that there is a genuine reduction in the UK. So as I said, South Africa first, then the UK, then the United States in that order. The United States is felt very much still in its massive growth phase. Um, Patients in mechanical ventilated beds, now this is for the UK as a whole, and we see it's flat. Despite the millions and millions of extra cases of um, Omicron, and of course this would, let's be quite clear about this, 
if this was causing a surge of patients in intensive care within 10 days to four weeks after infection, this would have fed through by now, and it hasn't. This is remarkably good news. And of course, each intensive care bed is remarkably uh, resource hungry. Very expensive process in terms of finance, in terms of hospital facilities, in terms of oxygen use, in terms of drug use, uh, and of course, in, in terms of uh, specialist expertise, nursing expertise, medical expertise, physiotherapy expertise, pharmacological expertise. Um, very, very uh, intensive process, literally. Well, that's why it's called intensive care. And it's not going up. So that is remarkably good news, completely consistent with the upper respiratory nature of Omicron as opposed to the lower respiratory nature of Omicron. So there we go. That, that's the way it's going. The engine is South Africa. The tender is the UK and the first carriage is the United States. Where we are now, the United States will be in. Um, that's a good question. In perhaps three weeks ish. Is it about three or four weeks behind? Something like that. So a difficult time ahead uh, in the United States for the next um, few weeks in terms of increasing cases. Cases probably going to peak at the end of January in the United States. But hospitalizations are going to remain uh, a challenge well into uh, February. OK, that is a, a bit of a my reading of the situation as of today. And of, as always, thank you very much for watching.